Hi and welcome. Here I am. Uh, I am live with you. And um, welcome. Um, I've been having numerous technical difficulties tonight, but I'm hoping you can see me and uh, that you are um, able to hear me as well. So if you don't know me, I'm Helen and uh, I am a self-confessed self-improvement junkie. Um, I live in Staines and after about 20 years maybe, maybe even more, of um, obsession of self-improvement, I decided to make this obsession my um, actual uh, career. And so over the last few years, I have trained to be a life coach. And last year, I uh, set up my own business and I am now a, a life coach um, for people. And that is my business. So um, welcome and thank you for joining me, whether you're here live tonight or if you are um, joining the replay. Thank you for coming. I'd like to tell you, so the title of this evening is around fears, needs and control. And the reason I wanted to do this was, you know, we're a week and a half into lockdown of coronavirus right now. And um, I don't know about you, but having no end in sight is taking a bit of the gloss off that what I did have. Um, so trying to get my head in the right place about what's going on and, you know, keep keep spirits up and so on is really important and the other thing is you know I'm not a key worker I'm not an NHS health worker this is just me um, and if I'm able to create something that is helpful for anybody else then brilliant let's go ahead and do that and hopefully um, through the learning and the training that I've got um, and the, the general reading around the subject that I've done for myself and for my family um, I'm able to share and give you that safe space as well. So um, where do we start? So tonight I'd like to start by asking um, by asking you in terms of what are the biggest fears that you've got around this situation right now? Um, for me, and I've already touched upon it, it's um, there being no end in sight. But that's not the only one. I guess for, for everybody, we're getting used to the new normal. So the new normal is having the whole family around or having nobody if you're on your own. Um, so it could be that you are actually um, struggling with loneliness. You could be struggling with having too many people around all of the time. You could be struggling trying to do your job and homeschool your child, children and look after your husband or your other half or keep a house which has got lots more bodies in there than things. You know, that what what is it that's really um, you're struggling with right now? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you have them. Um, uh, for me, I told you, uh, as I said, those things that are uh, I'm pretty much struggling with, I guess, is having a, a house that's a tip constantly um i'm also struggling to get any work done having homeschooling a four and an eight year old um who have motivational issues this week shall i say um so yeah so i'd, I'd really like to hear anything about um what you are fearing um and um, just to give you a bit more theory about what might be going on in terms of those fears is you know a fear usually comes to, to, to the surface when we feel a, com a conflict or one of our needs aren't being met. So um, whether you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs or not um, is not really important, but basically it's a triangle. And at the bottom, our very basic needs are around food, shelter, warmth, um, and then you move on to the safety and security. And I think with everything going on with coronavirus right now, that safety and security um, has actually been a bit, um, bit taken away from under us. And so we haven't felt safe. We haven't felt secure in what we do. And so I think now um, it feels like it's coming into a new normal. So I think most people will feel like in this lockdown, they're actually in this more safe, secure bubble. And so they're not afraid for their life day to day. However, most of the time in at least our first world country, 
we are much further up the scale where we have love, we have belonging with other people. And also, you know, we have that personal power where we can um, make the changes that we want to in our life, do whatever we want to in our life, go and, you know, I don't know, climb Kilimanjaro if you want to. Um, And all of those things around self-fulfilling. Hi, Fran! (laughs) Um, Self-fulfilling ourselves. So um, these are uh, the needs that we've got and how... A lot of them being taken away then help then question helps takes us back and starts to question what's going on for us. And so the other thing, um, moving on from Maslow, but moving on to sort of Tony Robbins, I don't know if you know him, he's the really loud, tall guy from America who's basically the guru of self help. Um and um he talks about six basic human needs, and one of the, the most uh, um, important, I guess, is around the um, that of certainty. And right now, there's no certainty for us. And without that certainty, we are sort of floating along, whether worried about whether we're going to survive, you know, how we're going to survive, what's this new normal going to be, what's going to be left afterwards. And I think for us, having that uncertainty constantly around us is really helping it is really making it difficult for us to carry on so um one of the ways that we can fulfill our needs if we're feeling um uncertain i wouldn't necessarily recommend this but there are lots of destructive ways so it could be you know uh, drinking yourself into oblivion if you can still get out of lots of wine but I'm just saying that rather than that another way to think about this insert this certainty is thinking about actually within your within your day-to-day life there is an element of uncertainty now you can't you we don't know when this is going to end but what we do know is we've got a house or we're we're living at home wherever we are um we've got a house, we've got another day tomorrow, you know, what is it that you need to to take control and what can you do to help um, ease this feeling of uncertainty? So um, the other things, um, and this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to um, do this, is around, you know, one of our big needs is about self, um, is about connection and love with others. So right now, a lot of people might be feeling that they're actually um, uh, lacking that because they're uh, unavailable. You know, if they're living alone or if you just can't go and see your relatives because, you know, they're elderly. Well, anybody can go. Nobody can go out at the minute. So it's it's a place where we could have lost a lot of um, connection and love. However, um, you know, what I've seen is so many people using zoom i've seen so many people using house party now people going live on video calls i've never used so much facetime with my parents and stuff recently and i guess this it feels like one of the benefits is and even with my local friends we've never done it hi julia by the way um we've never done it before but now we it's great we did we've done a zoom call where we're all there we, it was it was supposed to be for the children but no actually it wasn't for the children we just spent about 40 40 minutes gabbing and about uh, catching up with everything because we haven't and it feels like a new normal might be emerging which could be something to do with actually greater connection um and oh hi hi Dee thanks for the like um so yeah so I just wanted to talk about a bit about our needs and um also I think especially now um love you too um especially now I see um there's certain needs that I'm being a bit more strict about. So being at home all day, my job was at home. I always work from home now as a as a coach, but having three other people in my domain um, who are usually out at work or school has made it really tricky for me because I feel like that normal quiet time isn't there. So I've been really disciplined with going out. You know, when school is finished, I put my headphones on, get a podcast or ebook or one of the courses I'm doing shove my uh, earphones in and go out for that walk and it's a good hour I've been going out for but I know that that's the the other thing is as much as possible just eating and drinking well I know we're, we're probably living off rations and that's what it feel like but you know rather than just eating all the snacks 
um actually my husband is eating all of our snacks so there's none left for me um but um rather than eating all the back snacks do what you can to um to eat well to and to rest well and make sure you get that outdoor time that you're allowed at the minute because it's just it's really hard work here juggling everything together and also not feeling frustrated with the situation that you know at the moment has no end so um make sure you do those things and i think one thing i'd um want to ask is what things can you do that are within your control tomorrow to actually help think about that take away the uncertainty and start thinking about actually how could you make your day slightly more certain so you feel less at sea and more centered and grounded what could you do hmm? so yeah so um, have a think about that and either pop in a comment or think about it take away and um let's uh, see what you do um, and then I guess my final bit I wanted to talk about and I've, I've sort of thread this throughout the session so far is around control so obviously finding an antidote anti-vaccine whatever it's called for coronavirus is probably outside of most of our ability and our control but what there is you know um, one thing that um, I'm really, um, you know, well read around is the, the thought around reactivity versus proactivity. So you can react to a situation and in those situations when you're reacting, um, if you come from a reactive point of view, that is where you are actually letting the external events control what you're doing. Actually, but if you go from a proactive um, point of view, you're actually looking at what's going on choosing your response and then responding rather than the instant in the moment feeling like you're being done to but actually doing things yourself so um from stephen covey's seven habits of highly effective people um i read about victor frankel who's well known in any of again the self sort of psychological self-improvement areas he was in one of the nazi concentration camps he was a jew and um, during his time there, he studied how people survived um, and, and, and how they went through in their sort of in their mental frame. And he worked out that one of the last freedoms, the final freedom that um, people had because they'd taken away all their, you know, in the concentration camps, people, all their other freedoms had taken away in terms of what they do with their physical body, you know, where they go, all of those sorts of things. But he 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 honed in on that freedom of choice and that freedom in how you respond to the external things around you. And I think we all still have that as humans. Anybody does have that ability to choose our response to the external um, stimuli around us. And so what matters most in how we handle situations is actually our response to the situations rather than the situations that we go through and quite often going through the hardest situations builds our character and strength and so that we can go through hard situations again and inspire others having gone through those to also do that themselves so um i also want you to to think about what is it that um, you have within your control and what's outside of your control. So coronavirus vaccine, you know, the next, you know, what I'm going to do for my birthday, by the way, 28th of this month. Yep, it's none look, not looking like it's going to be much of a party. But, you know, there's house parties. We can, we can do other things. And I guess for you, what other things is it that you can do? What's within your centre and your circle of control? Don't look outside of yourself necessarily. Let's look at what you're um, what you're doing themselves. So uh, I just wanted to think about um, the fi final few thoughts, I guess, about is that whatever you're feeling right now, um, if you're feeling annoyed with everybody, if you're feeling actually quite optimistic, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling lonely, all of those things are normal reactions and emotions to what's going on. It's fine to have all of those feelings. But um, 
what I would say is that, yes, those are the feelings, but it's how you then react to those um, feelings that really gets you through this stuff. So, you know, I urge you to, to think about what's the stuff that's in your control. Are you eating right? Are you doing the things you want to? Are you giving yourself that time alone um, to make sure, you know, even if it's five minutes in, in the loo, you know, if you've got nobody else to look after the children and you're there on your own, just give you that, give yourself that little bit of space and outdoor time as well to really help yourself through that. But also think about, and this is one of the things I also, what what do you want to come out with the other side of this? So, you know, what results are you looking at? And this can be in your sort of work, career, personal life, relationships, all of those things. Start to think about actually, what do I want and what can I achieve through this? And why would I, What? why do I want it? What, not only a to-do list, not only what am I going to do this about this, about this, but actually really think about, so what do I want to take from this? You know, because I really feel like at the other side of this, we're all going to come out and we'll be different people because we we haven't been through such a collective thing. Well, I haven't, maybe generations older who've been through the Second World War, but we haven't in our generation been through anything like this and this is going to change us. Um, and the opportunity is there to take it as a positive step um, and to work out what you want to take from this, how you want to go forward with it. And also, you know, and, and then from there, understand why you want those things. And then once you've got that why and you've got your what, then you start thinking about your to do list and what you can do to get there. OK, so um, I hope that's given you a little bit of food for thought. Thank you to everybody who's been there. So Dee, Julia, Jess, Dave, Jamie, Joe. Um, Fran, everybody who's been there tonight, um, thank you for watching. Anybody who's watching, I hope that's been helpful. Um, and maybe see you all next Wednesday. If there's anything that you think you'd really like to get covered or any topics that you're really on your mind at the minute that might be useful for other people next week, you let me know and uh, drop a comment here or send me a message and I'm happy to do so. Thank you very much for being here. Um, stay home, stay safe and um, see you all again soon. Thanks. Bye.